Sometimes a dumb action movie is all you need. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Dragon's Library. Today I am reviewing the latest movie in my collection, Bullet Train. Bullet Train is a comedy action movie released in August of 2022. The movie, starring Brad Pitt and directed by David Leitch, the director of John Wick by the way, is an adaptation of a Japanese novel that was called Bullet Train in the US release. The movie follows a former assassin codenamed Ladybug, played by Brad Pitt, who agrees to a job in Japan. Upon arrival, he is told to board a bullet train and steal a briefcase. However, the simple mission quickly escalates as the Ladybug is confronted with numerous other assassins who have all been hired to retrieve the same item. As the conflict aboard continues and the body count gets higher, the assassins realize someone else is pulling the strings. Bullet Train is a rather simple premise, which has an incredibly strong opening. The film switches perspectives from several characters, and as the tension builds, the bodies begin piling up. This leads to excellently directed fights in different train cars, while characters often try to avoid drawing attention to each other. Many of the details operating in the background are explained as the movie goes on, allowing viewers to trace the multiple plots through the film, which is a testament to the writer's planning and forethought. However, there are several points in the later sections that drag, and the writing takes a dip in the second half in general, after the several of the characters team up and a lot of the reveals have mostly gone worked out. The fight scenes become more and more absurd, resulting in a bombastic ending that, while visually interesting, finishes rather anticlimactically. In addition, the humor, which was great at the start, almost seems to fade away near the end. As for the characters, Brad Pitt does a great job with Ladybug, as Joey King does with, you know, he stands out as the arrogant mastermind, the prince, who's essentially a schoolgirl, but more that she's like kind of a mastermind planner. Aaron Taylor Johnson and Brian Tyrene Henry, sorry, have a good back and forth as Tangerine and Lemon, these kind of uh, twin brother assassins that have been on some jobs together. You have Benito A. Martinez Ocasio and Zazzy Beats. On the other hand, they didn't get a lot of screen time as the Wolf and the Hornet, respectively. In addition, the other characters, including a former Yakuza and a Russian gang leader, just kind of show up and look cool. The cinematography is okay, sometimes excellent as it shifts through the life of an assassin in a few minutes or during a fight scene, with characters desperately fighting to survive, but a lot of the dialogue-heavy scenes are fairly static and impressive. Fights are excellent and have characters taking full advantage of the surroundings, grabbing improvised weapons and dealing with hazards, but that empty spectacle is all the movie really has to rely on. In conclusion, while Bullet Train is fun in the moment, it can definitely deliver a good night out. It lacks a lot of the substance outside of cool fights and a few funny moments. This is unable to fully counteract the messy ending and a lack of deeper themes. So in the end, while it's not a bad movie, I can really only give us a 7 out of 10. Go check it out if you want some damn action movie, but don't expect more than that. Moving on from there, we have the spoiler section. Basically, all the assassins here have kind of like run into each other before because they're all like professionals in the field. So you have like a few main groups. You have the Mexican leader of the wolf. You have the two British assassins, uh, Lemon and Tangerine. You have the, the Yakuza assassins. Uh, well, the Yakuza, the former Yakuza member and his son, who's trying to avenge his son. You have Ladybug. You have the Hornet, who's an American assassin, specializes in snake venom poison. She stole the snake and is using it to, you know, fuel her poison darts and everything. Or, you know, syringes as it is. And then you have the Prince, who's like the schoolgirl. Then they're all acting in relation to the White Death. He's essentially this Russian uh, mob le mob agent. He was, you know, a member of the Russian mob, mafia, and he got exiled from Russia. So he came over here and started working for the Yakuza. And, you know, the Yakuza, the elder, the former Yakuza member, uh, told the Yakuza leader, hey, this guy is like, he's really good, but I don't think we should trust him. And he's like, look, he's made his way in. He's worked for us. We're going to kick him into our family. And then he whacks the head of the, the Yakuza and takes over. So it turns out, so the prince, so when we get into this movie, um, Tangerine and Lemon are escorting the, the White Death's son back to him after, you know, paying, they see... They, another member of the White Death paid off the ransom. They were hired to retrieve the son and then steal back the ransom. Um, because he was not paying people to steal the son away from him, obviously. 
and they hop on this train with the briefcase. Now, Ladybug, Brad Pitt's character, has been hired to steal the briefcase back um, from someone else. Turns out it's not that though. Oh, what's interesting though is he wasn't actually supposed to be doing this. He's actually taking over last minute for Carver, who's apparently a dick. Uh, and yeah, pretty much a dick. But <laughs> he was, Carver was actually originally hired by name, it turns out, by the Black, by the White Death. As was the Hornet, who was actually hired to kill her son, the son. So she kills the son, Ladybug steals the briefcase, and suddenly Tangerine and Lemon are, you know, panicking because they got the Yakuza after them after this. Like, holy shit, he's gonna murder them. Meanwhile, the prince is already on board the train and pushed... Okay, so she pushed the son of the son, the grandson of the elder, off the this building. And she's blackmailing his father. She lured him there by saying, I pushed your son, meet me at this place. Um, and she's, you know, blackmailing him by... She essentially hired somebody to kill him if she does not call him every, like, ten minutes or so. And... She wants him to betray, so essentially betray the uh, White Death because the White Death is famous for killing everyone who betrays him or tries to go against him with their own weapons. So she wants him to take this new gun she's modified, which has an explosive in it, which will ricochet the bullet back into the White Death. Essentially, it'll backfire on the user, which is actually a really smart plan. She's using an a common execution tactic to take out the White Death. Now, you might ask, why the hell does she care? And we don't really know. At first, we just think she's just like this spoiled rich girl who turned into an assassin or whatever and wants to, you know, prove herself. But it gets more complicated when you realize, actually, this is all the White Dead's personal family trauma. See, Tangerine and Lemon, the assassins he hired, were uh, killed a bunch of his guys on another job. Now, he doesn't really care about this professional courtesy and all. However, because he wasn't there, his son, who he thinks is an asshole, actually, got himself arrested. So his wife went to go pick him up. However, the White Death was supposed to be in that car instead, and Carver, the assassin Ladybug has hired, you know, to take over for, tried to assassinate him and got his wife instead. So his wife got murdered in his place because his son could not keep himself out of prison. Yes. Uh, so he blames Tangerine, Lemon, and Carver for their deaths. In addition, he also blames the Hornet for their deaths as well. Um, it, you know, it's complicated, it's involved in all that. And so he essentially gets all of them to come on the train and kill, and that way he can kill them all. He, he hires Hornet to get her on the train to kill his own son while hiring Tangerine and Lemon to bodyguard him and keep the money to him while Ladybug is supposed to bring the money to him. The whole point is to give them all tasks they're not supposed to be able to complete so they all fight each other and by the time they get to the station, he can just take them out. It's essentially been a trap. It's a trap. Um, but... Prince, meanwhile, has been playing them all against each other even more so and trying to derail the plan even further, um, using the Elder and his son and grandson as a sort of scapegoat slash tool slash pawn. It's not really too important. But her reason is because she's actually the daughter he never wanted. See, apparently her name means... Uh, something son like they basically named her before she was born like they wanted a son and they were and when she wasn't a boy she was basically just a disappointment um and so she's pissed and wants revenge now because she's you know trained herself up over the, all these years which means this whole thing is literally just the family drama fallout of their mother dying <laughs> yes this family is so dysfunctional that because the mom died, the dad hired all assassins even remotely involved in her death. Literally people who were on the other side of the world who drew his attention away by killing some other people were involved because they can't work out their family drama. So his 
And when he meets his daughter and she like, just like, kill me. Cause he has the low, you know, the trapped gun. She wants it to backfire on him. He's like, you're not worth it. Go home. I don't really care. You're not to be part of my plans. And she just looks so broken. Like this whole time, her, the prince has essentially been trying to prove to him she's better. She she should have been his heir. She should have been the one he lavished with praise and uh, tried to support for so long. He wanted his son dead, but he put up his son's bullshit for years, it looks like. Like, his son's bullshit is what got their mom killed. And the dad just never cared about her. When it's very clear, she's literally everything he clearly wanted in a child. Ruthless, efficient, and she clearly had some form of loyalty to him to feel this betrayed, you know? Um, which makes it all the more fascinating when he's just like, you're not even a part of my plans, little girl. Get out of here. Uh, which is horrifying to her because he's holding the booby trap gun and was about to shoot her with it. She was about to win and then his dismissal of her derailed her plans, which is just such an apt metaphor for their entire relationship. Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, meanwhile, there's also a snake rolling around here, Brad Pitt making Brad Pitt noises and, you know, being very chill about everything. Because to him, this is so, not even be an assassination job. He's been going through therapy and doesn't want to be doing assassination gigs anymore. This was supposed to be a snatch and grab. That's it. You know, just a theft. Not murder, just theft. Oh, right, I didn't even mention the wolf. He's a Mexican assassin. His wife was, and the entire cartel he used to work for was killed uh, by the Hornet. And he saw Brad Pitt at the wedding and thought he had something to do with it. So when he sees Brad Pitt trying to get on the train, he tries to murder him. Uh, but really, he's just been trying to get to the Hornet. And it turns out the Hornet this whole time uh, been keeping the snake in a doggy crate, which does not seem safe. Uh, I'll just say, if any snake owner tries to do that around me, get the fuck away from me. I don't want those things... No. Mm. No, no, no. But, um... She's been dressed up as a mascot costume this whole time, which is just... <laughs> uh, so yeah. This is just all crazy. Like, it all comes crashing down literally after... Uh, Lemon gets killed and Tangerine manages to stay alive and there's so many things like there every little detail is brought back up here this is a very self-contained story it's all it takes place in one but even small things like you're wearing the bulletproof vest light or just all these little things like every time they bring some detail up in the beginning you can trace that detail in its causes and effects throughout the whole movie and it's just so good he didn't bring a gun he grabbed the sleeping powder all of it comes back up there's nothing there's no throwaway details here, it feels like. Like, all the details feel meaningful. Which is just very rewarding for rewatches, I find. Like, this, if it weren't for the snake, I'd be rewatching this movie like a dozen times, trying to chart every little thing, chart the whole web of interactions. Um, because it's just this giant rolling train wreck that you can't help but want to pick apart. Aside from that, though, there's not really much more to say. There's. Um, pontifications on the nature of lucky, unlucky, and fate. Like, the prince is extremely lucky, like, fortune, like, he constantly says, yeah, I'm lucky like that. I know, you're out of bullets, I'm, I just have to be lucky like that. Meanwhile, Ladybug is always just getting by by the skin of his teeth because everything seems to go wrong, and he's only his skill that's keeping him alive, and he's like, yeah, I'm just unlucky, I know. Uh, and he is unlucky, and she is very lucky. But that doesn't define them. Like, he still survives as one of the only survivors, despite being really, really unlucky. She ends up getting hit by a car, despite being the luckiest person there. And fate might be a thing, but you don't have to let it rule you. That's about all I could take out of there, meaning-wise. Like, there are probably deeper meanings, but again, Snake did derail my train of thought a bit. So, uh, yeah. 